Welcome, Patriots, to this episode of Ravens Radar. It is going to be Texas size today. Woo! I'm telling you, it gets me all worked up. If it's in your sights, it's on my radar. We'll be airborne shortly. The U.S. Navy is approaching a drag queen influencer to help persuade new recruits into joining the military. Yeoman second class Joshua Kelly, who goes by Harpy Daniels, announced back in November that he was the Navy's new digital ambassador. Their attempts to increase interest among young people amongst a historic recruitment crisis. A survey from the Ronald Reagan Institute found that only 13 percent of 18 to 29 year olds are highly willing to join the military. Well, uh, let me just be the first to go, Bleh. can you give me a break? What does this have to do with military readiness? This is, I just can't even imagine how hard our enemies are laughing at us right now to see this. It makes no conscionable sense that We've just decided, so the, the purpose of our military is to defend our borders, to ensure freedom, to protect its citizens, to deter the forces of evil. And somebody in the Navy thought that we could accomplish all those things by putting somebody really tall and biologically male in a dress, and that that was going to strike fear in the heart of our enemies, let me tell you, it struck fear, but not in the heart of our enemies. It is demoralizing. I can tell you as someone married to a military person, United States Air Force, someone who is the daughter of two Air Force retired lieutenant colonels, I find this sickening. And many of the military do because our military is not a social experiment. What you do in the privacy of your own home is your business. We all fought for that freedom. We fight for your freedom to do whatever you want in the confines of your own home, as long as you're not hurting anybody. But this is on a whole nother level than this is can only be summed up as Biden's military, that where this is important, it's not important that we can actually protect America, it's more important Okay, that the 0.3% of the population who aren't sure where, what they are, you know, are allowed to just run over everybody, everybody's rights, everybody's freedoms, everybody's comfort level, everybody's respect. We just, we, we're all giving a front row, given a front row seat to it. And quite frankly, we are sick of it. So what else is happening? Well, Bud Light's poll numbers are going down faster than Titanic. Um, they are still yet to apologize. They are doing the um, the back pedal walk. They are doing the moon walk that would have made Michael Jackson a little envious. So they are backpedaling with, we're not saying we're wrong, even though we are, we're just saying that we didn't know about it. You know, this, we fired the agency, we have scapegoated everybody that needs to be scapegoated to explain why we put an influencer as the face of an American brand, uh, somebody who admittedly says he's been a woman for a year. Well, I'm telling you, I've been a woman for almost 50 and it entails a lot more, okay, than makeup and saying the word boobies on television. 
I don't know if any of you guys have been seeing these ads. It's it's pretty ridiculous. I, I don't know any women who talk like that. I don't know any people who aspire to be women who talk like that. And that's the part we find insulting. So, um, you know, Bud Light is on its way down and hopefully they're taking all these other ones woke, all these other companies who were supposed to be celebrating what's unique and different about being a woman have chosen to align themselves with biological men. Um, so it's, and again, before, but Raven, I identify as a furry Raven. Well, here's the thing, you know, technically my husband probably identifies as an F-14 fighter, but he doesn't get to sleep in a hangar and drink jet fuel. That's kind of the way it works. You know, we got to come on back to reality, come on back, you know, to, to the, to the light side, come back to the light. So just not Bud Light. But come back to the other lights. But that's what we want people to, I just want you to see how this wokeness number. And also, if we're in declining, Joe Biden's popularity numbers, okay? My grandfather used to say, you can't fall off the floor. And Joe Biden says, hold my ice cream and my beer. Here it comes. His poll numbers are on the way down because we can't hide the ridiculous this people can't take it i mean we can't take you getting lost in the rose garden we can't take you know you squinting at the teleprompter it is painful it is painful so and the fact that he is now let's finish the job he has launched a re-election campaign with the second most unpopular they're hoping that if they pull their numbers together both of them can get one i mean it is absolutely like hysterical Poll numbers, so Kamala, who I love to, to bring this out, who had the same number of delegates in the primary that I did, and I wasn't even running. So she, who is slightly less popular than Diaper Rash, is teaming up with uh, the sleeping zombie, okay? And they're putting that together with record inflation, a wide open border, okay? An economy on life support, expensive gas, empty shelves, our enemies railroading all over us, a couple of spy Chinese spy balloons and some nuclear uh, waste spilling over into certain places and a partridge in a pear tree. And now he wants to finish it. Not likely, Grandpa, go have a nap. The rest of us have a country to save. So that's what we've got going on. And at the end of it, to cap it all off, patriots, by the time you're seeing this, Title 42 will be expiring. Title 42 is a COVID era protection that allowed us to repel migrants, illegals, okay? Just wanted to draw you in with that. They are criminal illegal aliens that are on our border crossing into our country illegally, okay? Now the, the, the bleeding hearts, but they're not breaking major laws. Well, so aren't jaywalkers, okay? But that's what you guys wanna do. I mean, President Trump, was it, is it a violent crime? No, but you guys can't get off of him for anything, right? In fact, I think while we're taping this, he may have cut the tag off a mattress. You guys might wanna get the SWAT out there or something, but this is what patriots need to be focused on. Right now, we are looking at possibly up to a million people overrunning our border this week. And Biden says, well, we're sending 1,500 troops to the border, but they're sending them to do paperwork to help process more illegals. So they're there to support people in case they get a paper cut. You know, this is absolutely, they're not there to secure the border. They're not there to repel these illegals coming in. We don't know where they're coming from, what they're carrying, and what their intentions are. And it is absolutely going to be the worst catastrophe we have seen on our border, probably in modern history. It is going to be a dumpster fire, but like myself and my guest today, we are all on this front line. We have a vested interest in saving our country. We will not turn it over to Sleepy Joe, the cackling czar, the vodka queen, and all the other idiots who are not even pretending to run our country anymore. They have sold out, they are derelict of duty. 
They are about to put Americans in grave danger, and I and many other patriots are, we're sick of it, and we are not going to take it anymore. So we are officially American people. We let your congressmen, your legislators, your senators know. Call them today and tell them, do not let them open this border, secure the border now. All of these people are gonna be looking for reelection in 24 Patriots. The power is now. We can do this, but if you have not communicated with your legislators, that's part of the problem. We gotta get involved, okay? We got to report to this line. Nobody won the war from the back seat. We're only gonna it, win it from the front lines and we're only gonna do it when Patriots are engaged. Now is the time. You know, we need a sign. This is it. Title 42 is expiring. This is the sign. So come on, patriots. We're going to show them how we really got down in 1776. We're going to show them what it means to make America great again. And for my veterans and law enforcement out there, we need you, but we're going to get it done. We're going to show them the power of the patriot, and we are going to make America great again. And we're gonna start by having the most amazing guest on our show today, the one and only legendary Mr. Texas himself, Agricultural Commissioner Sid Miller, right after this. Welcome back, Patriots. It is time. It's time when it gets good, right? This is a time. Wake Biden up. It's getting good. And I'm telling you, we have legend in with us today here on Raven's Radar. We have the one and only good friend of the family, the Harrison family, and just amazing conservative, the legendary one and only agricultural commissioner, Sid Miller, with us today. Woo! Welcome, Sid. Howdy. <laughs> I'm telling Good to be you. Back with you, Raven. I am so glad to have you. I am resisting the urge to fangirl. You know what? What the heck? The stars at night are big and bright. <laughs> so thank you You're so something. much. <laughs> something. <laughs> but I'm telling you, thank you, Commissioner. You know, we are on the front lines a lot together fighting this because we've got a country to save, but you are in the news again right now because <laughs> you're controversial so right now let's see if we we've got this right so right now you are in the news because you recently instituted a dress code policy at the department of agriculture texas department of agriculture and before i tell people what it is i want to show what the reaction has been about this from the left President of the United States. Woo, Sid, it, you would think you forked a kidney out of somebody. So explain <laughs> to us what this, what the policy that you just instituted is. Well, se several reasons. One, people got, you know, sent home, work from home. That was great. And uh, you could just stay in your pajamas and work off the couch. Well, when we came back, people's, you know, dress got a little lax. I actually had some people come in in their pajamas. One lady wore a nightgown to work. I mean, just crazy stuff. Uh, the one that really bothered everybody, especially the women, and most of the people, my employees, majority of them are, are women. Uh, so, especially in food and nutrition. I have this guy, he's six foot four, has an Adam's apple big as my fist, decided he would just start dressing like a woman and go in the women's restroom. So I had one lady quit and the others were revolting. And so I come up with the dress code. We ran it through legal and uh, the controversial part wasn't no pajamas or, you know, tuck your shirt tail in and all that stuff. Uh, I had a line in there about you must dress as your biological gender. And that's, that's what uh, all the libs heads exploded over. Oh, you got that right. 
But, you know, let's talk about this. So this is what people we need to hear. Uh, there's two sides to the story and then the truth, right? And this is what people need to, people were coming to work in their pajamas. So Sid, come on now. Let me be, let me be uninformed viewer, but I identify as half asleep. I should be able to come to to work, but that's what it is. But you just hit on something that I really want conservatives to hear. Okay, somebody six foot four who just you know woke up one day and said, you know what, you know, there's a because women we're all like pack animals. We all have to go to the bathroom <laughs> together. So he just kind of followed these these women into the bathroom, and heck, no, guys, it doesn't work like that so you don't get to just all of a sudden change the rules keep that stuff at home so sid you're not saying that people <laughs> you what you do in the privacy of your home you're saying don't bring it to work correct right that's this is my agency i am the commissioner i run it i've got 700 employees and, th and i expect them to, to look and act professional you know i have I have dignitaries from all, all around the world, ambassadors, trade representatives, elected officials from all over the country, uh, in and out, judges, mayors, you know, all kinds of, of professional people in and out of my, my building and out, in and out of our offices. So, and I, you know, I don't want uh, uh, anyone embarrassing uh, my agency. We're going to look professional. We are professionals. We're going to act the part. We're going to dress the part. Whoop, Sid for the win. Okay, Patriots, are you paying attention? Because that's what we need. I And thank you, Sid. Uh, I know what a woman is. I've got good insight on this. And we need to, these women came to you, some employees came to you and said, Sid, do something. You know, this is, you know, this is our space. We are uncomfortable. So I want the people to hear this. Your rights can't trample. Your wanting to be something can't trample over somebody else. So you did this. You instituted what you thought would be a common sense measure of just saying, you know, um, you got to dress like your biological sex. In fact, I think we have a clip of you talking about this on one of the news networks. I have a new dress code that critics say targets transgender people. The Texas Observer first reported on the memo from State Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller. It says that employees are required to, quote, dress in a manner consistent with their biological gender, and that anyone who violates repeatedly could be fired. Our legal expert tells us the memo could violate Title VII, which prevents workplace discrimination based on race, sex, and religion. And though gender identity isn't spelled out, U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a 2020 decision that gender identity is included in those protections. Our expert also points out that it's OK for employers to have a dress code and that this memo is ultimately just pushing a legal boundary. They can tell them to dress professionally. Um, you know, they can have certain grooming types of requirements. There is nothing wrong with that. It just cannot be based on sex. Sid, were you prepared? Are you surprised at the pushback on this, at the absolute heads exploding about this? You know, I'm, no, I'm not surprised. It's, it's Austin. It's, it's actually expected. You know, anytime you try to do something uh, morally right, you know, add your family values, you know, run, run an agency like it's supposed to be run, uh, you know, a lot of liberals in Austin. You know, most of the people probably work for me are probably, you know, somewhat liberal. I don't have a lot of conservatives applying to work in, in state government, uh, a lot of turnover. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, I was expected. And that's why we took our time, uh, went through the legal department. We had four or five versions when we finally got the, the last one. I personally included the word biological in front of gender. Uh, some people said, you better not do that. You know, it's going to be too much. You're going to get pushed back. Well, I don't really care. You know, as long as I think I'm doing the right thing, I can sleep at night. So that that's what I did. Uh, they got the message out and it's it's effective. Well, that's right, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to water down conservatives, right? They are trying to water us down and, you know, and try to soften it. So you're essentially just going along to get along. So Sid, but that's really important. So we're taking a stand. We're saying, okay, this is how it works. And can you please inform those who are who are watching right now who are going, Sid, Sid, 
Texas is an at-will employment state, which means Sid has the right to force you to rope cattle before or, or get the, the ropes ready for his cattle roping. And he has the right to set the tone of what standards of professionalism are held in the workplace. And then you have the right to abide by those or quite frankly, go pound sand, correct? That, that, that is correct. Uh, and they can, you know, they have to go by the, uh, the dress code or they get reprimanded, sent back home, you know, to change. They don't want to do that. Well, they don't have a job. So, you know, it's just, I hate to be that way, but I, I shouldn't have to be that way. Correct. We should have more, more respect and more common sense than, than uh, what we're getting. I agree with you. And um, it torpedoes that. But Sid, you hurt their feelings. And uh, we, we've got to get past this, guys. We, we have to no safe spaces around Sid Miller. And thank goodness for that. So, Sid, I also want to talk to you because this is really important. Some things that people don't realize that fall under your wheelhouse. We've got Title 42 getting ready to expire. So what this means is this was the last little layer of flimsy protection that we had to repel the invasion that's coming through our southern border. As our ad commissioner, as someone who is also a rancher and a farmer, can you please tell our listeners and our viewers what the end of Title 42 is looking like to you as the ad commissioner? Well, it's, it could possibly up to double the amount of, of uh, immigration that's coming through our border, illegal immigrants that we're allowing to come in. We could turn some back uh, that, that didn't qualify as refugees, you know, fleeing from an oppressive government or, or dangerous situation. Now you don't have to have a reason. You, everybody shows up, everybody gets in free, you know, so uh, it's going to be, it's total chaos with Title 42. I can't imagine uh, the chaos it's going to be uh, when, when the floodgates are wide open, we don't turn back anybody. So a lot of these countries are, are sending their worst of the worst, you know, people over here to get rid of them, get them out of their incarceration and out of their penal system. And uh, it's it's just we're not some of these people are probably fine people. But there's a lot of them that aren't. So and we don't have any way to screen them now. You you got that right. So and you are a rancher and a farmer. So you've heard the feedback from the ranchers and farmers. So they're coming across and they're mowing the yard for these people and they're upkeeping the property that they're trampling across. Or is it a different story? Well, they're coming across just everywhere. There's no place that it's not. There's still the gotaways that you know don't want to be caught. They don't want to come across even even when they're processed. They don't. We a lot of them we don't even process, but. Mostly it's Title 42. Uh, they will come across, get processed. I saw where President Biden sent another 1,500 troops down to the border, but not to repel the invasion. It, it was to, you know, more processors, you know, to uh, help process the, the surge that's coming. So probably won't be enough. Uh, I don't know where we're going to put all these people. Uh, it's uh, very overwhelming to these, these rural counties on, on the uh, Texas-Mexican border. It's just overwhelming. I just don't know how we're going to handle it. Well, you got the, chaos. that right. And you just really called it. I think I said that in the opener that Biden sent 1,500 troops to the border, but not to repel or secure, but to help the paper pushers. So in case they get a paper cut, we're going to have 1,500 there people there to help them, you know, get these illegals processed so they can disperse into our country immediately. You're got to be kidding. This guy is ridiculous. This is, I, you know, I say that, you know what I'm going to say to you? wake Biden up. This is getting good. We, we have to secure the border. Okay. We have to actually secure it. The numbers are dropping because you're not counting anymore. So this administration, but I would like to tell before we, we let you go, tell our patriots, what are your priorities right now as ad commissioner? What are you working on to help get America back on track and Texas? Well, we, we, that'd be a whole nother show. We've got a lot going on. Of course, we're, we're making headway on stopping China from buying any more of our farmland. That, that's, a, that, that's a biggie that looks like we're actually going to get uh, something done there. Uh, we're working with Congress on, on the new farm bill. We're, we're crafting that, getting legislation put in there. Uh, we're pushing legislation to secure our schools and get an armed guard in every cafeteria. Across, across the country. Of course, we continue to market agriculture products uh, around the globe. We just got a delegation back uh, uh, to Uzbekistan. 
Uh, it's kind of an unheard of country. There's as big as Texas, 30 million people, and they import 80% of our food. So we're reaching out. We found we're still finding new markets all over the globe. That is incredible. I'm telling you, um, my ag commissioner is better than yours. I'm, this is a this is a uh, a really important time, patriots. This is what it means to have patriots on the front line fighting for what it makes America great. And Texas is ground zero. We got a lot going on. And I'm telling you, I feel very honored to be with the one and only Sid Miller. So Sid, um, and in your third term as agricultural commissioner for the state of Texas, congratulations. Where can patriots find you and reach out and get involved with Team Miller? Well, go to uh, uh, website, uh, www. Uh, millerfortexas.com find us on social media miller for texas uh facebook slash miller for texas is my main venue we we have almost a million followers there and reach 30 or 40 million people a month we put out a lot of inf- a lot of our good information goes out there you can also find us on our official uh uh state of texas website texasagriculture.gov texasagriculture.gov uh we also have uh, uh social media for all of our agriculture uh, programs, you know, our Go Texan program, our wine program, uh, just the uh, Texas Agriculture uh, Facebook page. So we're out there. Just hop on board and take a trip with us. And that's right, Patriots. What I always say, if you can't be on the front line, support those of us who are. And Sid Miller, one little fun fact before you go, you wrote the foreword on my book, correct? I sure did. I did. It is a good book. Dude. Well, thank you so much, Sid, for being with us today on this episode of Ravens Radar. I really get encouraged when I see conservatives like you, you know, helping us because the front line is dirty. But it's it's awesome to have you here fighting for Texas, fighting for America. We are so glad to have you on our show today. Glad to do it. God bless. Keep up the good fight. And we'll be back right after this message from our sponsor. Thank you, Patriots, for joining us on this episode of Raven's Radar. Did I tell you, there is one Sid Miller. My gosh, he is a great guy. He is a gentleman. He is a strong conservative. And that is so what we need. We don't need these people getting pushed around and letting them tell you up is down and left is right. We need strong men who will stand up and actually represent what they believe in. And I'm really grateful. Thank you again to Sid Miller uh, for information about Sid and more about what he's doing. You can check us out on the web, ravenharrison.com, on social media. We are Raven the Conservative Warrior, Raven underscore TX Warrior. And while you're at it, I made a little hint of it in the interview today, but Please go out and pick up a copy of Raven's Mantle. It is my book. It is available for pre-sale on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. It will be out in print in just about two weeks. And as I mentioned, the foreword was written by our one and only Sid Miller. And it is a barn burner. It was also endorsed by Mike Lindell and Dr. Peter McCullough. We've got an endorsement from Moms for America. I mean, this book is packing some serious power, and it is a blueprint of how we got here, what makes a conservative warrior, and how the scape of taking our country back looks from the front lines. I'm going to give it to you raw and unfiltered and patriots. I consider it an honor to do so. I also want to take a shout out to my uh, sponsor, Patriot Mobile. 
They are the only Christian conservative wireless provider. We are members, and I'm telling you, patriots, you have to vote for your wallet. It does no good to scream and complain about China and communism if you're using that money to fund your own invasion. So get behind our sponsors. Get behind the people who are trying to preserve your freedom, like Sid Miller and myself and Patriot Mobile, because patriots... It is time to mobilize. So use the code RAVEN and you can get free activation. They're going to take care of you. We're going to make sure of that. And patriots, I'm telling you, this is a glorious time to be alive, to be made for this. Our country needs us and we get to answer. America is sending the distress and I know I will be there to answer the call. And I hope you will too. Until then, keep fighting.